I'm Ben Pearson from the Police Interceptor and I am reacting to apparently what's called Live PD, which is an American cop show and it's people that weren't English Police Interceptors, second rate bobbies that have uh, gone over to America and think they can do what we do. You like that? They get guns as well, don't they? And V8s. <laughs> it's Officer Miley. See, look at him, he always, we weren't excited, he already looks good, doesn't he? He's got a square jaw, he doesn't have two chins like me. Apparently there's someone wanted on a warrant and they're going to have to formulate an ID and then go from there, but yeah. You haven't done anything. Recording. So just before we go any further, there's this thing about putting people in cuffs. We're entitled to do it, Americans are entitled to do it. What you're allowed to do is if you detain someone, basically you're allowed to put them in cuffs um, for your own safety. Now in England we very, very rarely ever do it, but you'd, you'd see it done at like football matches, you'd see it done at riots or public order situations or where there's been a, a violent offence where we'd rock up and we'd be able to put them in cuffs to search them and obviously uh, negate any weapons and protect ourselves but in America they just do it as a matter of course because I think uh, guns that are so freely available. Josh, is that right? Because Josh used to be American. <laughs> He's got firearm in his right hand. If you had your ID. Has he got pink cuffs as well? <laughs> is this his is help? Why has he got pink cuffs? He lost his real ones, he had to move them from the Imagine Doris, where the bloody hell's my cuffs gone? It's numerous times we have these devices and you can scan the thumbprints, fingerprints, and it's brought up and it, it gives you, you who you are, your photo, all your ID details. And we've had people, even with one eye, that said it's not them and block some picture, like one eye. Sure. I am Mr. Hart. Okay. I am his father. Well, if that's the case, man, we'll get you out of these in just a second, all right? What's she wearing? I, you know, I, I would have ran. Right, law, police law, socks and sliders. Anyone who wears socks and sliders needs arresting, putting in prison for a lifetime. Don't ever wear socks and sliders. I fucking hate it. You're drink, I'm thirsty. Do you wear them? <laughs> Do you? No. I don't wear sliders. Socks and sliders, it's embarrassing. And how old is he now? Uh, he should be probably about 27, mate. How's the right scanner here. coming? Yeah. A scanner must be what we have, which is a fingerprint device. There's no way he's 48. Absolutely no way. Did this one better than interceptors? There's no car chases at all. Is it me or does he look like a bit of an American version of me? <laughs> this vehicle was called in for shoplifting. All right, you lean back against the truck. I'm just driving around, man. I've seen them, you know, at GTs. And we were from high school together. Just first thing is, even though I don't uh, get the American lingo, can't lie straight in bed, can I? Whatever coming out of the mouth, rubbish. What, what's going on? Who, who are these guys? Uh, these are just friends, man. Friends. What's the yeah. Is it me or the American officers always seem robotic? I always seem like very straight down the line and as in like reading off a script, so to speak. How do you know this dude? Um, I, I just know him from school. Know him from school? And what school is that? Uh, I think Ren. Ren? Yeah, Ren. How old are you? I'm 42. Okay, how old are you? I'm 26. 26. <laughs> so... Like I said, can't lie straight in bed. We know you're lying, you know you're lying, we know you know you know you're lying. Everyone's lying, apart from us. And then the fact that matter is like, you know it's gonna come out. You can stand there to your blue face. Dick. Straighten this out with me. You went to school with this guy, but you're 26 and he's 42. Right. So how so does that work out? I was held back. We didn't go to school together. Well, I mean, that's pretty obvious, but, right? You know what I mean? Well, okay. All right. See, now we're getting to the honesty part. That was you feel me? I didn't have one. Okay. <laughs> you didn't have one. All right. So, is there any crack inside the car? No, were you coming sense. over here to buy crack? I was not. No, I don't have any money. Okay. What was your point in coming over here? I'm not buying crack to anyone. I was just pulling over, man. See, there's a lot of patience going on here as well. I wouldn't have been that patient with people. I just think, like I said, you know they're wasting time, everyone's wasting time, but you either get to it at the bottom of it there and then, oh, that's it, but there's, there's, there's a lot of chatting here when there doesn't need to be this much time. And one of them matching your description. How long have you been in this truck? Um, they picked me up at GT not too long ago. Picked you up at GT's? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, now. We're just trying to sort out uh, who was in the vehicle at that time and uh, if anybody wants to start being honest about what actually happened. The police have got to abide by all these rules. We've got to be governed by what we say and what we do, and they don't. So you can ask them as many questions as you want, but you know they're lying. Um, but they can say and do what they want, and you can't. So that's what ties your hands, really. Hey, who drove it? I don't know his name. Come on, tell me the truth. I don't know his name, man. Lock them all up. Lock everyone up. The store clerk, she's going to do a, uh, a drive-by and uh, see if we, she can identify 
either one of these individuals as the individual who shoplifted from uh, their store tonight. Uh, someone with the dark t-shirt on. Someone with the dark t-shirt. He was the one who stole the beer. The other two guys were not there. We can't do a drive-by. We can't do that. But what we can do is get the, the person in the car, the witness or the complainant, and then drive around the streets until they point them out. But we can't stand there with the suspect and say, are these them? Because technically, if they didn't know and didn't believe it was, and we're only 75% sure, they were going to say, yeah, because she stood with a police officer. So we wouldn't be doing that. All right, buddy, you're under arrest for shoplifting. What? I ain't doing no uh, That's not what she's saying, my man. She identified you. Tell her, um, look at me. She I'm, identified I'm, I'm, you, buddy. That's why they drove by. <laughs> That's not a cigarette. That's a zig of weed. That was not mine. It, it was found in your in your floorboard next to your feet. There's no way with you being the sole driver of that vehicle, you did not know that crack pipe was right next to your I feet. Bro, are you serious, man? Yes. We know you've done it. You know you've done it. Don't waste time, because you could be back at the cells, getting some food, getting some brews, or you could be on your way. So just be legit. Say what it is, and then get off on your way. Um, right there? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I just didn't want you to lose anything. What a shit car that is. What a shit car. Someone's actually gone to shop and said, can I have a white Hyundai, whatever it is, and I want one with basic wheels on, five doors, and I want it to look shit. Yes, sir, that's $12,000. Step out of the car for me. Okay. For what? Because I'm asking you to step out of the car. All right, now listen. Don't wear shoes in a minute, do I? <laughs> this could have been so simple. So simple. I would have even helped you guys out and probably given you a break. But you lied to me. What? People that lie get punished. People that don't lie get advised. So just take that and remember that. If you lie, you get punished. If you don't lie, you get advised and get laughed. I want your name, your I last name, and your date of birth. No, sir, I don't have to oblige you. You don't? Okay. Do you understand that driving without a license is an arrestable offense? Driving. Okay. All right, well, she told me that you were driving. Everyone's always wiser as well than police, aren't they? I don't have to give you my name. Well, you do. You're behind the wheel of a car, so when you're on the road, you need to give me your name. You were going back in your car to leave. Okay. So I don't, I don't know why no, you got back I, out of your car. I wasn't leaving, I was doing you. checks. No. I was doing checks on the driver. You were leaving. I was doing the license plate. You were leaving. And I was researching a couple of things. You See, again, I lost my patience with him. I don't like liars, we all know you're lying and then you're just cocky and arrogant, and I don't like that. You're not driving with a, li with a license, so. I wasn't driving. Okay. All right, can you sit tight for one minute, please? Yep. Look at that car, it's awesome, isn't it? I mean, look at bull bars on the front. That's like what we should have on our cars. And I don't understand why they don't allow that and put them on it, it stops the damage, and um, it pushes out of the way. But yeah, that's awesome, is that? Absolutely awesome. I don't know if the class, the pit manoeuvre has been safe, really, but we do do it. We're not taught to do it, but we do do it. And the reasons we do do it is to end the pursuit, uh, make sure that the pursuit comes to a safe conclusion, because we'd rather pit a car and have the car spin in the road than go through town centre and kill like 20 people. But I think they don't teach it because you can't guarantee what the car's gonna do. There's no, there's no correct way and there's no formulation for it to say it's going to go if you eat on this bit it's going to go this way if you eat on that bit it's going to go another way so i think the idea being is it's just it's just not 100 what your class is safe but driving in a pursuit's not safe tea packing the car's not safe wrestling the burger's not safe dealing with a knife man's not safe you, you you're talking about a job that's in in theory there's no boundaries on because it's never going to be safe is it you, you're not dealing with normal people you're dealing with shit's society she told me that he was driving and that he was afraid and had them switch because he does not have a valid license. Not cooperative. So my sergeant is arriving now and I'm going to touch base with him in regard to how we are going to proceed. She's called a sergeant and I can completely understand why she'd probably done that if she's not right sure, but in England, no mucking about, just seize it. Um, if, we, if we're in that predicament, just seize it. It's easy to get it off road, make sure it's in no further offences than it is to let it drive away. As soon as they get around the corner, switch again, he ends up knocking a child over and kills them, never see him again. So just see you take it off road. You should have been honest with me. I could have worked with you, but... So again, all that lying, it's just come to one conclusion, which is you get him locked up. I would have helped you. I'm not stupid. I would have helped you out. Well, you obviously are stupid, are you? Because you're in cuffs. 
Yeah. You know, All right. Don't act like me. Okay. Just uh, on the side. On the side. Look at him there, that other officer. Looks like he's chiseled out of marble steel and bombs, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like Greek god. <laughs> All right. Oh, they're okay. locked up. They're locked up, OK. That's what we should have. We should have police cars that have got a designated area in back where the criminal can sit. Um, they're, they're segregated from the drive in front. The windows are all blocked off so they can't escape or kick the window through. But it doesn't work like that in England. We'll just get a, a four-door family saloon or hatchback, put some comfort seats in and that's it. Uh, it should change to how Americans do stuff because that's where they are in front. We're heading to a uh, theft called the Sports in the Warehouse where a guy stole a knife. He didn't use the knife in the theft, but he stole it. He took off and went and hid in their dumpster area. See, this bloke here just looks like a complete and a badass, doesn't he? I mean, look at what he's wearing. He looks like he's special forces or something. Um, and I think that's the impression that police should be giving nowadays. We have sort of, we have gone out of the, the, the Mike Baldwin slack suits, tie, shirt, and we are getting to that point of wearing more uh, of a, a uniform that works and that we can roll around on the floor with a burger in, but it still needs to have its day, really, and go a little bit further like these uniforms. How's it going, man? Do me a favor, turn around, put your hands behind your back, okay? You're under, yeah, you are right now. Okay. I'll explain to you in a minute, okay? See, in a situation like that where we've said there's already a knife involved, um, what we do, we do, all police officers are going, you go in and you detain the suspect. Before you know what's going on, you try and get them in cuffs as quickly as you can. And the reason being, it takes two seconds for him to pull a knife out and stick it in your neck. Um, so it just creates a little bit of safety for not only the police officers, but obviously you can see the members of the staff that are stood there in the the, the people in the background not doing the right lot, so he's done good there. Oh. Let's walk outside. I, got, hey, I, got I have him problem. detained. I, have I know. I know, the one you just stole from Sports of Warehouse. That's your problem. Dude, I haven't been to Sports of Okay. Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. That's my personal life. I'm sure it is. Uh, it had taken two seconds for him to walk that and then lunge at an officer. So it just you just don't see what people have got on them. And, and, and the amount of people we've dealt with in the past where they've got a weapon on them. Uh, and you just don't see it until it's actually pulled or you search someone and you're pulling it out. So I'll tell you what's the problem here, okay? Because the <clears throat> sports in the warehouse okay. said you came in there and stole the knife. They watched you on security. How do you think I came to you? Okay, I understand that. So they said they watched you on their security cameras going to where the dumpsters are. Which, so let's start okay, over. Let's, let's try to be grown-ass men for a minute. I'll be honest, yes. Okay. See, I love that saying as well. When someone says that, it gets people's backs up because you're being a man, you're being obviously polite and kind. And then when you know the line, it's childish behaviour. So when you say, like, obviously, let's be men, um, it gets them a little bit irate because they're just thinking, like, I'm acting like a child. But then that's when most people do come up and say, yeah, all right, an officer, I've done this, that, and other. Thank you. I'll, I'll walk right behind that dumpster. Kay. My coat will be there. I'll, I'll stand right here. Right. Have a seat on the curb right there or something. Yes, That'll work. Yeah. So you know, negative, wouldn't do that at all. He's left the suspect there, handcuffed to the rear. Uh, and he's going to go in a, a thin area on his own. You can't see the suspect. If he doesn't know what's around there, wouldn't have happened. I'd have waited for my colleague to come. I right, would suspect now I'll be off on my feet. I got your hat and your coat and your bag. Two flashlights and two knives. I've had that one for a long time, everybody. I think it's scary though, you can just go in the shop in America and buy a knife like that. Just straight off peg. But just go in and buy it's like a sports knife off a shelf like that and do what you want with it. First my life. Can you just roll it? Yeah. Hey look, it's marijuana. I'm gonna guess the rest of this came from Joanne Fabrics. I'm gonna go find out if you stole that from them, so I'm gonna give you one opportunity. This is the stuff you said your mom got you? She's gotten that for me, I'm returning it. Where's the shop she stole it from? <laughs> she didn't get it for you, you just stole it from there. She has gotten it for But me. not, no, she didn't get any of that. No, she None didn't. of it. No, she didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I'm... And you are, one, you're a pathological liar, and two, you're a really liar on top of it. I'm sorry. So don't, you should just stop doing that. You're a bad thief and a bad liar. You need to find a new job. <laughs> 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 Fucking awesome.